Howdy peeps, hope you're doing well. I also hope you enjoyed the last video that I did. I know it was a bit... Might have... Could potentially upset a few people because of the stuff that I was talking about in terms of beliefs and stuff like that and how... How people um, use belief systems as a way of manipulation and control over the masses. Now, some of you might be like, ooh, that's all a bit woo-woo. And it's like, hmm, is it now? Is it? Yeah? Is it? I don't think it is. I mean, if you think about it, if I'm to talk a bit of men going the wrong way, red pill philosophy, which I'm going to do right about now. You see, what is, or why is it the core practice that most men that are going their own way and I mean hardcore going their own way. They're not entertaining relationships. They're not entertaining one night stands. They're not even entertaining, in some cases, even speaking to women. In some cases. Do you think that's just because they woke up one day and thought, eh? Or is it because they had an awakening like many other people have had to the reality of the situation? And whereas, like I've said and many other men out there have said in the Manosphere about um, the government inviting themselves into your personal relationships, your personal lives and then making it their business to take away your wealth if that relationship doesn't work out. You see, that in itself... And it, it, it went be it extended to beyond that, it's like... To the point where you didn't even have to be married anymore before they could stick their noses in shit that uh, none of their business. Right? And, um, you know, it's like. When. Well, if you can't see that that is a, a blatant manipulation of, of a, a system that wants maybe had more to it maybe it had more skin in the game for most people whereas you know families used to have to stay together they had to work together they didn't have to work together but i think overall people made better choices in some cases not across the board sure some people did entertain uh extremely toxic relationships just because of societal norms and i'm not talking i mean they still do it now sure but you know, things were obviously a lot different as we look back in time. But the point is, governments used a religious system that they deliberately knew people had value and, air quotes, faith in. You know, the, the idea of, of marriage is that you don't give up on your partner. You don't step out on your partner. These are very noble things, right? You, you'd, and they shouldn't even be seen as noble things. It should just be expected. Um, obviously, as I've spoken before about the exceptions, you know, if you're involved in a toxic relationship, it's like, I often wonder, like, whether people just didn't want to see it. You know, um, even like the tarot reading that I did yesterday I don't know who it was for even now but whoever it was knew the potential of what was going to happen but they, they went ahead anyway they got involved found themselves at the ten of swords with that uh, knight of cups in reverse I'm just saying, and look that could have been male or female, right? it, it could have been a uh, a guy that got themselves involved in that situation, or it could have been a girl that, or a woman that got themselves in that situation, doesn't matter. You know, flip and change is however it resonates, as the saying goes. And obviously, I spoke a bit about uh, King James's Bible, I think it's King James the Seventh, and it had been changed 11 times, and there's only a a bunch of people that followed the King James Bible that actually picked up on it and then said something about it. But still, changes were made that shouldn't have been made. 
and you could argue the same with King Henry VIII of United Kingdom when he wanted to go ahead with divorcing one of his wives because reasons and uh, everything that came with that. So because of people using <clears throat> intimidation tactics and more than just intimidation tactics for that matter, uh, yeah, rules were changed in, in religion to maybe in some cases to to save some people from being executed unnecessarily, probably. But yeah. And I was sort of thinking about it more and more. I started thinking about this whole religion thing and you know what Native Americans believe in and what what the American government and church did to the children of the Native Americans once they'd basically kidnapped them and put them into boarding schools and then indoctrinated them with Christianity. You know, so that they'd they'd forget their own roots, as it were. It hasn't been the first time that that's happened, and it hasn't been the first time that Christianity has been responsible for that. And look, I'm not just doing it for the sake of picking on Christianity. Other religions have done it as well. I'm probably not allowed to talk about it, because then I'll get called names, right? Get singled out as being something I'm not, just because I'm calling something out, and people don't like it. Anyway... Probably another reason why my channel is as buried under the algorithm as it is, because I've done that in the past, called things out for what they were and potentially upset a few people. And it might just be because of that that I got buried, right? I'm just saying. But it is what it is, I'm not too fussed. I figure anyone that finds the channel and subscribes, it's obviously for a reason. And those that have been leaving recently, well maybe that's for a reason as well. But I'm happy either way to carry on just doing my thing and talking my talk and you'll either like it or you won't. A lot of... I was, I was thinking about this whole um, divination thing as well recently. I, I thought to myself the other day, yesterday in fact, you know, we've, we've often heard of people that have had predictions and stuff regarding potentials of what could happen. And one of the names that crops up into my mind quite regularly is Nostradamus. And I think I did a film, I think I watched a film about him once. And how, how he went about getting his, uh, I suppose, insights or predictions, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes I think it was alcohol induced, other times I think there were other substances being used. Um, again, this is something that uh, cultures such as Native American do as well. Native Americans do as well. Um, well you've heard of the peyote plant, I don't need to go into a great detail, I'm sure. Uh, it's kind of like a, the equivalent to magic mushrooms. And I'm not condoning or endorsing the use of either. Just saying, it's like, it's your life, you're responsible for you, I'm not responsible for you. Anyway, you know, I was, after doing yesterday's video, I was just, like, I got in earlier, and I just put my headphones in, and I thought, alright, let's, let's see who's got to talk about what, you know, and, uh, lo and behold, there was a, uh, History Channel video that cropped up. It's only a five minute long video. But it was about Nomos. You guys know Nomos? You heard of Nomos before? I don't mean it's not a Spanish word. I'm not talking about gnomes. I'm talking about Nomos. Nomos and Ama, I do believe. N O M M O S and A M A. Now these were, because I don't know a great deal about them, I literally just heard them about five minutes ago, so I don't, you know, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know all about it, I don't, I've literally just found out about it now. But it's to do with 
African tribes and their beliefs, or perhaps one particular African tribe, I'm not 100% sure. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll throw a link in the description when I'm finished chatting. But it was more to do with the, the possibility for um, extraterrestrials being a thing, having come down and given wisdom, and it's not the first time that's been spoken about within our within the humans as a rule, as a, not as a rule, as a collective, right? And I'm talking about spaced space people type aliens, or in this case, fish people. Because they believe that there were people that came and that they, they, they lived, they came from the sky but lived in the water or something on them lines. Yeah, I probably should educate myself a little bit better sometimes before doing these things, but I was actually quite excited to share it with you guys. And some of you guys might know about it already. It is totally possible. But again, it, it also comes down to the, the point I was getting at, the, the beliefs that other people have before Christianity was brought into their territory, I suppose. And how they used to live their lives. And, yeah, Christianity takes over, trying to take over the world. And, like I said before, and like I said, it's, it's not the only religion. It's, it's the only one that I can actually talk about without getting in trouble. Funny that, isn't it? It's not funny, haha, -ha, it's just... Yeah, what a coincidence. You can only talk about... There's only one religion that you can actually insult, make fun of, and not suffer any formal consequences in terms of uh, backlash, either from people sometimes, or groups of people. That's, that's the only one you're allowed to take the piss out of. That's an interesting one. Right, let's throw a few cards down and just see what we've got going on. I'm actually using the Nate Spirit deck. Just doing a quick three card spread. <laughs> Spirit of Earth. Vision Quest. And Prayer Feather. Very good. <laughs> Bottom of the deck we've got Owl Medicine. <sighs> but this is all just coincidence, right? I do have to resort to the book, I don't know. I don't know the, uh, I mean, vision quest is a vision quest, is I know exactly what a vision quest is. Right, let's have a look at Spirit of Earth then. Prosperity is blossoming in all areas of your life. You are strong and grounded. Who you are is enough, just as you are. Connect more fully with nature. The Spirit of Earth asks if you, that you tend to your health. Detoxify your body. Understand how to use your body's physiology. Pay attention to how your body feels and respond accordingly. Create a home for your soul. Have objects in your home that feel good every time you see them. Be present. Cherish the here and now. Your native spirit wants you to know. The spirit of earth represents your physical self and your physical surroundings. It's okay to make plans for the future, but make sure that you also embrace and appreciate the present. You are deeply and profoundly loved and supported at all times, no matter what's occurring in your life. Trust that all your needs are being met. Take time to create spaces in your home where you feel absolutely at peace. In doing so, you create a template for peace in all areas of your life. Feel the solidity and power of the earth beneath you. This is in your core. Just as grass pushes up from out of moist ground, know that fresh new shoots of growth are similarly, similarly taking place within you right now. You are grounded, prosperous and strong. The journey. All the solid forms around you, including your body, are, are a part of the physical realm. Notice how you relate to and identify with the physical universe around you. By doing this, you act you are activating the spirit of earth within you. Let the reality of your relationship with the earth fill your consciousness. Feel it in every pore in your, of your being. 
let yourself merge with its energy, imagine how it would feel to be a rolling hill, a great mountain or a deep canyon. Imagine yourself lying in a meadow of wildflowers in, high in the mountains. Visualise the roots of the trees extending deep into the soil, reaching down toward the centre of the earth. <laughs> Vision quest, card meaning, sacred seeker. Take time away from people and situations, consider it done. <laughs> Step back. Withdraw. Inner truth is emerging in stillness, but first you need to retreat. Know that you're guided. Look for your answers and in different ways. The answers are around you. Watch for signs in the coming day. Trust that your life is being directed. Your native spirit wants you to know. In earth-based cultures, larger questions about life are often answered on vision quests or solo retreats in nature. Questions such as, who am I? What am I meant to do with my life? And what is my mission and my purpose in life? We we're often answered on quests of various kinds. Even if you don't have burning questions, when this card chooses you, it's telling you to take time away from your ordinary life. Take time to explore the depths of your soul. Your soul knows the truth. Take time in quietude to discover what it is. The answers to your questions are all around you, but you must... Be still to hear these messages. The journey. Spend time alone. Yeah, like I said, consider it done. Preferably in nature, without your cell phone. Oh, that sounds brilliant. And internet. Sounds bliss. <laughs> and even without pencil and paper or a book, simply be. Listen to the world around you. Be still. Watch for signs. Open your heart to receive messages from the divine. And then we have a prayer feather. Card meaning. Love is flowing to you and through you. No matter what an individual is saying or doing, love him or her anyway. Oh. Fine. Gather your inner forces, silently and secretly, <clears throat> love deeply and fully, with every ounce of your being, even if someone isn't fulfilling your expectations. It's easy to love people when they're acting wonderfully, the true challenge is to love them when they aren't. I don't want to... Uh... <laughs> I'd rather tell them. Uh... Your native spirit wants you to know. Feathers in native cultures often represent a connection with the creator. Birds often symbolise messengers between the two-legged humans and spirit. This is your time to love and be loved. The love that you send out into the world comes back to you a hundredfold. There are times when the small concerns of everyday life need to drop away and be replaced by the majesty of your being. This is that time. Prayer feathers are decorated feathers that can be used for many purposes. In some traditions, prayers are placed onto the feather. You can hold it to your heart or between your hands as you focus on your prayer. And then tied onto a bush so when the wind blows it carries the prayers to the creator. Another kind of prayer feather is decorated feather or a decorated bundle of feathers that are used for smudging sacred smoke uh, smudging ceremonies. The smoke is used to cleanse the space as well as carry your prayers upward. The journey. For a day. Journey. This is a challenge. Sorry. For a day, love each person you encounter. I can see me getting in trouble. Ju I'm just saying. Imagine a golden ray of light from the centre of your heart radiating to the centre of the heart of that individual. Notice how you've how great you feel by the end of the day. Won't lie, I'd feel even better if it was reciprocal, you know, rather than unrequited. I'm just I'm just saying. 
But no, that's a good. I like that. Uh, I think it is kind of quite re relevant in some cases to what I've just been talking about. Spirit of Earth, Vision Quest and Prayer Feather. The point being is when we pray, regardless of what religion you believe in, or what way of life, or whatever you call it, it's still the, the principle is still the same. And I often wonder as to how some people get so wrapped up in thinking that theirs is the right way theirs is the right one and you got to do what they say otherwise they're going to do bad things to you because that's what they got told to do uh, usually written in books right i'm just saying you know you can't books are useful they are for many reasons, it's good to educate. Unfortunately, they're also good to indoctrinate. So always read between the lines. Twenty-one, twelve. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this one up. Thank you guys for listening. It is much appreciated. I'll leave a link in the description regarding Nomos and Ama and all of that, so you guys can go and check it out. Cause I think to some it might be. It might be more interesting to some, it more, might be more relevant maybe, I'm not sure. But I think it's important for most of us to have, not necessarily something to believe in, but I suppose to know, know the roots of your soul. And before I wrap this up actually, there is a difference between soul and spirit. Depending what what you're taught and what you believe you see the soul soul can be tarnished yeah you, you can get bad people with karmics for example right karmic bad karmic people because karmics is quite open generally people refer to it as being negative but you can have positive karmics um but I think people just assume the negative for the most part. So they refer to karmics as just being a negative, but whatever. So, so the soul of the person is tarnishable. You might have heard the expression sometimes, oh, you've got no soul. And it's like, no, they do have a soul. It's just probably toxic. Just saying. But spirit. The spirit of a person, that cannot be tarnished. The problem being is that if they have a tarnished soul, they may be out of touch with their spirit in the first place. Some people will understand what I'm talking about with that, but not everyone. And if you don't understand it and you are curious, I suggest you look into it. Because then you'll understand between the diff that difference between soul and spirit of a person. And at the end of the day, when we look at each other, when we see each other, the bodies that we have are merely vessels. I mean, sure, yeah, we might look a certain way, right? And a lot of the time, we can make the wrong assumptions on how we think someone might be based on their appearance. It takes getting to know the spirit and the soul of the person before you can actually make any form of judgment but a lot of the time people are yeah, that's where the expression don't judge a book by its cover comes from they weren't actually talking about books they were talking about people and it can go either way anyway 2417 thanks for listening thoughts comments and opinions drop them down as always except you're quite a quiet lot don't be afraid to make some noise. Till the next one, stay cool, stay free. Peace out.